sort of heavy at this stage, but it alternates, you know, depending on how he feels. His energy levels, uh, we just began to implement uh, uh, our cardio regimen and drop uh, his carbs a little bit low. Nothing too drastic. He doesn't hold much fat. It's just uh, a lot of water right now. And at 308 pounds, his condition, you know, at this stage is exactly where it needs to be. You know, the contest is not next week. It's not in two weeks from now. It's in eight weeks. We have more than enough time to peak perfectly, you know, the day that it requires to peak. So sometimes you have a lot of athletes looking great two weeks before the show, six weeks before the show, but it's about, you know, getting the work done at this moment to be productive on that day. So right now we're starting with the uh, the bench press movement. Yeah, this warm-up is excellent, man. I mean, kind of Oscar O'Donnell. He's kind of instructed us to do some flies, you know, before uh, climbing under. If we're doing kind of like a, it's almost like a compound um, set. Not actually a superset because the pre-exhaust. Yeah, the pre-exhaust, the muscles to be work under the bench. As we all know, Kai Green is trying to bring up his chest for the Olympia. So here we go. Well, after the Arnold, we uh, wanted to take some time to rest and recuperate and clean out his system a little bit so we can make some gains in a short off-season before the Olympia and uh, focus basically on the basic movements. I mean, if you work for Lee Haney, you work for Dorian Yates, you work for Ronnie Coleman, they all have massive chest, always focusing on the basic movements, you know, bench press, incline press, dumbbell presses, and flies. Just a matter of doing it, being consistent and going heavy and allowing the body to recover and grow and then doing it all over again. Combine that with a high protein diet and rest, we really wanted to make sure that this year his his chest, his shoulders are very dominant, especially the, mo the most muscular and the front last spread. So you'll definitely see a much more improved Kai. Our, our goal has always been to always outdo what he's done before. So, you know, this Kai Green will definitely, you know, be blowing away the Kai Green of the Arnold, just like the Kai Green of the Arnold blow away the Kai Green of the New York Pro and always improving and getting better. It's not body build, it's not body maintenance, it's body building. So always, you know, continue to strive to improve in all fronts, you know, psychologically, nutrition and training. So as you can see right now, he's uh, warming up with three plates, getting ready for the uh, heavy resistance to come. Well, you know, um, I've said on numerous occasions, I've introduced Oscar and described him as, you know, um, my mentor, training partner, um, and coach. Technically, you know, I think for the first time, the audience is getting, you know, a sneak peek opportunity to kind of like, uh, you know, be the fly on the wall in some respect and kind of, you know, get a picture of what that looks like. Um, and this is that opportunity. Um, um, this is a gym that we, um, you know, was very interestingly enough, you know, started out at. You know, Oscar trained here as a teenager um, and moved around and moved on. Um, I, too, uh, when I met Oscar, was brought down here and trained here as a teenager, you know. Um, so, yeah, I worked at the gym, had to mop the floors at one point, and was doing the mirrors at the gym, and, you know, ate at the gym, and tanned at the gym, and trained at the gym. Spent a lot of time as a gym rat at this gym and others. Um, and, uh, yeah, at some point, we were able to graduate and get out there to Steve, Steve and Bev, Powerhouse gym. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes it's a long commute, you know, by the time we get there and then traffic coming back. We would love to train there more consistent, but it's 
the drive to and from, you know, takes about two or three hours off the day. You know, but you know, it's definitely worth whoever wants to go a train. Absolutely. Yes. Well, I think there's a need for all type of equipment. However, you know, for the type of goal that we're trying to achieve and accomplish, you know, I believe, you know, always taking the most efficient route. You know, nutrition-wise, training-wise, and in developing the chest tissue. Yeah, you have a lot of hammer strength machine and this shiny, fancy new machine made by this other company, but nothing beats the basics. You know, it comes to squatting for legs, bench pressing or incline pressing for chest, and that's what we focus on. Um, it seems to have been working, so if it's not broken, we don't fix it. So we always strive to maintain with the basic movements and go freaking heavy and eventually you know when you go this heavy as in five plates right now a lot of the chest is being utilized the shoulders the triceps you know and just stabilizing the weight as he goes up and down which you really can't do if you do it in a uh, hammer strength so there's a lot of it's harder I mean, it's harder to squat free weight. It's easier to do an assist machine and leg presses. So that's why you don't see a lot of people squatting, um, you know, four or five plates with 20 reps. When they can do it in a Smith machine, it's a lot easier. But we're not trying to make it easier. I'm trying to make it harder. When, whenever you make an exercise harder, you make it better because the muscle has to work that much more hard to, to, to bring the weight up. And therefore, breaks it down and through nutrition and rest builds it up stronger than ever. I believe in listening to my guru slash coach slash mentor slash trainer partner. Yeah, I just believe in getting it all done in a way that it possibly can be done. Are you Ronnie Coleman? <laughs> no, uh, do I believe in strip sets? Yeah, at times, you know, we... Uh, we do that the other times that we do rest pause. Um, you know, whatever it takes to get the job done, you know, intensity could be described in many different ways. This is one way to make it intense and to, you know, to fatigue the chest muscle before we move, on to, before we move, on, move over to inclines. But there are times that we go to fight place and we rest pause, do another two reps, rest pause, eventually he get 10 or 12 reps with that and he's just fried, you know. Uh, so it, it, it depends. Sometimes we do strip sets, um, and sometimes we do something else. You know, there's no, you know, right one way to skin a cat. There's no wrong one way to, to uh, develop the physique. You know, you find instinctively what works best for you, and you stay with that regardless if the whole world's against you. You do it, and if you believe it, and you see results, you stay with it. You know, I, I, I don't want to bore, like, the fans out there with, like, you know, the facts of the matter is a lot of times, you know, it's just not as 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 awesome, I guess, you know, in actual application as it may sound in theory, you know. Reality is I eat pounds and pounds of meat a day. It's that's the fact, you know. Sometimes, you know, it, 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 we're cycling up right now. You know, chances are before we get to the event, we may be we may be just doing like another another uh, experience of we've done as much as nine or ten pounds of fish and steak, you know, going into it. I know some guys can't do that, you know. Uh, some people may believe that's impossible to do, you know. Um, you know, I don't want to set limits for other people, you know. And a lot of times when you talk specifically about what you do, um, you know, you can set, you can help other people set limitations on what they can, you know. So, um, you know, it's just real important to be able to understand that, man, you are working real hard to be a pro athlete at this level, working really hard to be able to best represent, you know, the ideas that my, my, you know, my mentor, my training partner would, would expect for me to to do and represent our camp and represent, you know, Team MD, represent Muscle Men. Muscle Men wants me to come out there and look like the dude that is doing what he is supposed to do behind the scenes. So, you know, you know, I'm, you know, you better believe that if I say that I'm taking my my carnivore, I'm doing it. 
You know, you better believe that if I say that I'm taking my, you know, methyl burn, then I'm, I'm going to do that. You know, if I'm taking my inoxide, then I'm, I'm going to do it. But I'm doing it to, with the end result in mind. And that result is being able to get out there at the Olympia stage 2009 this year, you know, and do what we came there to do. You know. But, you know, since the Arnold to put on more size, a lot of people may be, you know, wanting to, this, this could be a forum for people to be educated and learn, you know, uh, as we were once fans of the sport and, and coming up in the sport and um, what, you know, what a pro athlete at this level does, you know, from the Olympia, I mean, from the Arnold to the Olympia prep, you know, our main goal was to put on thickness and 